Welcome to episode 85 of the XRM Toolcast. In this episode, Scott and I speak with Danny Hill, fellow MVP and creator of nine cheat sheets for the Power Platform. I happened to fall in love with Rami's cheat sheet from back in 2013 with JavaScript, and Danny has all these cheat sheets, one of which is JavaScript, other ones are uh, forms and other things as well, and views, things that you wouldn't necessarily think uh, and aren't dev related uh, at all, uh, but are great for the Power Platform. So be sure to check it out and sit back and relax as we listen to Danny talk about his cheat sheets as well as other areas of his life. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of the XRM Toolcast. With me, your host, Daryl Always Raising Labar, and Scott, I take punts from everyone. Daryl, Scott, how's it going? Very good, thank you, Daryl. Yes, punts. Punts are very popular in, in yes. Oxford, where I where we used to live in, in the UK. Um, but yes, punts is a football term as well, as I've learned out. Learned, uh, yeah, well, yeah, American football, but yes. Ameri- yes. American football, yes. No, yes. not soccer. Yes. As, uh, you know. Don't want don't to upset <laughs> a large percentage. Of, you know, most of the people who listen to, to the show are not from the United States, yeah. so I always have to make sure that I... Yes, I, these there. cultural challenges are, you know, <laughs> continu- continually challenging me. <laughs> but yeah, pun, punts in the punts in Cambridge and Oxford, um, awesome, like flat boats with big poles, and you stick them down. You have okay. to be very careful though, you know, because that's the only form of propulsion is a big pole. Uh, you have to be very careful because there's lots of very low bridges, um, and and it's a bit of an occupational hazard because you can basically hit the pole on the bridge, which you can capsize, uh, or you can get their pole stuck in the mud. And then you can end up okay. like, like hanging onto this pole. Stuck with the punt there. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, usually you have people on your punt. So you want to do like a good job. Like, and it basically you feel as though people are silently judging your punting skills. Um, and, but you know, there's usually pims involved as well before drinking lots of pims. So it, it's, a, it's quite often a train wreck actually. Um, but okay. uh, yeah, lots of, lots of fun, lots of fun. Punts um, and pims. Right. Mm, punts pims and pims. That, and that is quite difficult to say. Punts, punts and pims. Like, like pims? Cheat, cheat cheats. Cheat cheats. Um, cheat yes. yes. Cheat cheats. We're going we're gonna to talk about being <laughs> cheaters today. Like, like back when, when I was in, in, in high school and I, I, yeah, I took, my, took out my TA83 calculator and I write a program that was like, it would just say hello. But then if you look at the source code, I had all the notes in the actual source code. So like you could, <laughs> you could look at my notes that's in there. So yeah, that, that, uh, I may or may not have done that uh, in my own I hope, I hope not, none of your ex-teachers uh, <laughs> listen to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, And they're like, I they knew it. I knew it. I yes. knew it all along. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Yes. So, um. <laughs> so um our guest today has created quite a few cheat sheets uh for the power platform and and, and beyond and so i'd like to introduce the danny cahill danny a uh, pleasure to meet you how you doing yeah thank you guys i was just listening to your your talks about pimps and you know bunches <laughs> and and what, whatever i quickly searched the word pimps i didn't know what that went meant actually so yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, my name is Danny. Thank I still don't know what it means. Maybe the... I should go look okay. it up. <laughs> <laughs> this, could e- yeah. this, this could very, very easily, this podcast could very easily get distracted on completely unrelated things, Danny. And you'll just have to keep on, you know, keeping okay. us coming, coming back to reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, we're here to talk yeah. about my stuff, not, not PIMS. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, cheat yeah, sheets. Cool. Um, yeah. Cheat sheets. I love. So th- thank you, Danny, for coming on. Um, uh, I, I just, I'm in total awe of these cheat sheets, uh, that, you. that you do. I mean, they're just beautiful and so crammed with information. Like, like Daryl says, you know, it's like, like just trying to distill down everything you need to know in a small space is, is, a uh, is a real, uh, valuable and, and difficult skill. Um, yeah. I mean, what, what got you started on these, you know, what, what gave you this first idea to do, start doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, I guess work, right? So effectively, most of it is when I start. So I started my career effectively. The first, I started my career in Dynamics 15 years ago, or, or, six, or actually 16 years ago now, right? So I started from a developer. So I was actually a year, I was a developer writing JavaScript. I wrote a few plugins that was terrible at it at the time. And I quickly realized that 
I wanted to kind of play a little bit more with config. And, and so I evolved to be functional. And then throughout my career, I had a few roles. And my last few roles were effectively mostly more about on the envisioning side. So solution architect, but also really working with the business from very early stages, trying to envision, you know, how we can meet their requirements using the platform and local tools, right? So very often I was having to very quickly prototype some ideas and concepts using Dynamics and the Power Platform. And it hadn't, it was not, so those solutions didn't need to be perfect, didn't need to be super pretty, didn't need, but they need to be doable and they need to kind of make sense from a UI perspective, uh, an automation perspective. And I, I ended up spending quite a bit of time on looking, you know, how do I quickly build a Power Automate? What kind of views can we use? What kind of fields can we use quickly on on form so that I can very quickly prototype a solution and show that to the client and then during my workshop, show them what's possible and kind of drill down a bit more to detailed requirements with them. And I realized that, you know, when I was searching through marks of documentation, so the marks of documentation is, is very rich, there's plenty of documentation everywhere, but then you spend a lot of time looking for what you need and then you have all the amazing blog posts that all of us from the community are writing but they are very often very specific about a topic right so um so an example i know amy wrote an article about how to tweak the timeline amazing right it's very detailed but then when i need to prototype something i i want to have an overview of all the possible tools in one place so effectively I try to solve my own problem, to be fair, right? So, like mm. I think all of us are doing first, right? So, solving my own problems. So, very, so very early stage, those cheat sheets were very, you know, dry in draft kind of notes in my, you know, Google Drive or in PowerPoint where I quickly kind of, so they, they were very draft. Uh, cheat sheets for me and then you know i started thinking well if they are useful for me i'm sure it would be useful for others and then i think like all of us i think i posted one cheat sheet about the i think it was the poor automate um dataverse connector which was two years ago and a lot of people loved it so I had a lot, lot of reactions and people, you know, and, and I used a lot of that one. And from that on, I, I, each time I was kind of envisioning and designing solution, I kind of have ideas to build future additional cheat sheets. So views, for example, to my surprise, the views got a lot of, uh, it's just a, a list of the possible views you can use in, in the app, right? Um, it got a lot of traction and a lot of comments about, um, you know, we didn't even know that was possible and so nice to see, you know, just one, like you said, one sheet, one sheet with all the possible, um, you know, views that you can have. And so effectively, I use those cheat sheets myself very often when I discuss with the business, quickly need to prototype something and I need to write a quick core automate. Then I, you know, I refer to the cheat sheet and I quickly can, you know, create that core automate. It doesn't have to be finished products and have to be mm -hmm. the one that the, that we going to go live, but it's something mm -hmm. that I can use quickly, as I, as, as I said, to prototype and show a working prototype and also to explain to devs, right? To some of the devs, I, I can, I, I often just refer them, look at the proof of concept we have done there. Of course, you can um, rewrite the whole port automate if you want to add more you know, to make it more robust and everything, but at least gives you the idea of the steps and what needs to, to flow in the solution. So that's where it came from, to be fair. Mm. Hey, it's interesting you're saying that you, you've done the development as well and then moving into kind of more of the requirements side of things, because I think that shows in your in the content that it's a really diverse set of content. Are we, we Daryl, we normally kind of do the whole kind of bio thing for Danny. So maybe, maybe oh, you know, maybe we, we should do this yeah. on, on the, on the, on, do it on its head. Cause you know, we normally, when we yeah. introduce guests, we kind of, hey, right, you know, and it's like, here's the bio, but you yeah. know, it, I, yeah, it's you know, interesting. It's only because I messed it up because I had it pulled up and then I, I don't know. I, I had a brain fart, I guess. Cause, cause I was going to do his Twitter account and I noticed that he joined in 2010 and he has had four tweets. So he averages just under a tweet every two years. So I thought, 
maybe that's not the correct spot to pull for this bio. So, uh, but yeah, Danny LinkedIn Hill is, is a solution is a solution specialist and MVP on the Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. He talks about D365, D365, MSDN 365, Dynamics 365, requirements and Power Platform from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. There we go. That's what I intended to do. Now yeah. you get it halfway Thank through. You. That helps to uh, yeah. <laughs> give you an extra boost, an extra boost, to, you know, just just bring it back into it. So, yes, there there we go. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for pointing out all the ways I failed you today. Okay. <laughs> no, you never fail me, Daryl. It's always it's always just a, it's a journey. You know, we get there in the end. Um, we all or, Scott. Yeah. But but the um, but yeah, like I said, I, I just love that the diversity, like you say, you got the the flow one you did which i remember seeing i was like wow there's a lot of information there and i i i, I whenever i see your cheat sheets i always think i need to print this out on like a a0 piece of paper and stick it on my wall in my office but if i'd done that with all of them i think i'd probably have like wallpaper that would be covering it like the <laughs> ceiling and uh, how, how many do you have now how what, what, do, you, do you do you keep count i mean i I, no. I try to keep count of our listeners which is maybe 15 16 now but um <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think I have like eight, but they are in various stages. Look, I think, I think the mo the one that helped me the most, the poor automate definitely. <laughs> the the poor automate definitely, it's the one I, I use almost each time. Because the problem, I I mean, the problem I often have, right? So I'm not constantly writing poor automate. I write a poor automate or a few every every month and sometimes i just forget right so i do a lot of discussion with the business workshopping and and then i go and prototype so i don't know may, maybe it's, it's problem with my brain but i effectively forget very quickly you know the details of some of the expressions and protomate can be quite tricky right where mm. sometimes you have to write you know the the field name in a specific format lookups it's a bit different big list so it's a lot of different kind of nuances to it right and i always kind of was forgetting so that's the one that really kind of saved me a few times um the javascript one that i just wrote um i had my i had my collection of scripts a little bit all over again kind of you know saved scripts from previous projects by you so it's always when i have to write javascript i was always going back to my previous code and it was a little bit all over right and a few times in my head i said man i have to put something together to write that down and then yeah in july august last yeah a few weeks ago i just again went through all my notes collected everything looked a bit on the net and then put that together and um mm. yeah i was actually quite surprised to be um you know um invited to your show which is kind of more i guess surprised a, a dev show right with with more oh, it's a developer focus ah okay yeah Never, everyone's everyone's, everyone's a yeah, developer these is. days though so you know it's like <laughs> everyone is just every, I, and i think a cheat sheet is a it, and we talk about xrm toolcast right so it's it's a yeah, tool yeah. it's a tool that we use to, to, yeah, right. to do stuff um and uh and yeah I, I totally hear you about like having those little little files squirreled away mm. um with lots of snippets of stuff i i'm i i may be guilty of the same thing um you know and like it's, just go oh, i had that but then my problem is i forget where i scrolled it away i scrolled away so well that i <laughs> <laughs> you, you are a little squirrel like that's I how am. it works they, they get the acorn they put it in the ground they forget yeah. where the heck they put it and now the that's me like this, that is, is, this is scott this is that's exactly scott the squirrel me. row that was should yeah. have been your tagline this time i, yeah. I messed up every i introduced you wrong i introduced danny wrong and just everything wrong uh, so uh, so danny I, I know you're not a a um a, a normal or a consistent listener, let's say that. Uh, so one thing that you may not know is that we, we generally will bring on somebody that's nice enough to volunteer their time and, and their effort and, and to share what they've done. And then we, um, we give them more things to do. We just you know, <laughs> try to raise the bar a little bit higher. Yeah. Say, hey, you need to do this. So um, are you, did you ever see the like original, I'm going to call it the original because for me it's kind of the original JavaScript cheat sheet from 2013 by Rami? No. No. Okay. So that's something you need to go check out. Oh yeah. Uh, that's a read so, out. Yeah, so search right. for Serum 2013 uh, yeah. cheat sheet and, and, um, or, or yeah. Rami, um, uh, created one Ra there. Rami Moonlight? Like, that was, yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. That is, 
that was my original. I have a I have a talk that I do that basically is kind of just covering the cheat sheet and talking about <laughs> oh, yeah. what all you can do in the API and like it's all in there and it's great and and most of it has has really um is really is really just as good now outside of where you're getting the context from now that you know you can't grab it from the page but mm. outside of that like it's it's pretty much all still kind of uh very very similar to what it was before so so you oh, may cool. you may want to just. Take a look at that. See if he's willing to. I don't know if he's gonna. He probably won't change it. It's been since 2013. Since he last such to play. Yeah, you may want to take it and give it your little uh, UI feel to it. So, but it's um, it's a very impressive. Oh, uh, yeah, nice. Thank you. Sheet, so, and yeah, it's yeah. something that I would love to do, but don't have either the skill or the time. And so, if I can encourage others that have both, that's that's awesome for me. So, you know, a little bit of a selfishness uh, going in here. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I found it. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, I haven't seen it before. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, cool. Yep, yep. Mm. And I mean, is there a is there a single place where you can go where you can download? You know, you've got all of your cheat sheets listed. Is there a single page? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So there is my so my website. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you can search articles by cheat sheets, but it is in probably at some point maybe i'll make another tab with all the cheat sheets in there mm, uh, that, that's my request have... definitely yeah okay yeah <laughs> and, then, and then we can put a link to it so if you do it now we can put a link to it before this gets released you know well, so, yeah, okay. I mean, it, it, it's it's pretty much there it's it's dunnykill.com slash category slash cheat sheet and you're done yeah mm. exactly. all the cheat sheets yeah. listed yeah. there yeah they can't I, you have to like click on each one to kind of download them and and yeah, uh, I can say like one of them has like a little like a uh, paywall in front, not paywall, but a uh, <laughs> a subscribe wall, I guess maybe in front of it. So yeah, um, but yeah, we can put a link to that and definitely so people can go and browse, yes. you know, all, all, all of the things. Um, yeah, yeah. So right, right me... next to that link is a buy me a coffee link too. So that could that could be yeah. yeah I, I would <laughs> encourage people to do that as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so effectively the ones where I guess. There's a few three different ones, but the ones where you can just copy the code like Core Automate and JavaScript, like you can just, there is no subscribe button because I thought it's easier for everyone just to open the, the PDF. You don't need to subscribe. You can just copy paste. For the other ones, there's nothing to copy paste. So the mm -hmm. image is enough. Now, if you want to have the PDF format that you can edit and add to your internal documentation and then i'm asking for to subscribe um because effectively you you don't need to subscribe to get value out of it if that makes sense yeah if you want i think that's fair it, enough definitely. yeah so that's a bit the reasoning yeah. behind but um yeah so definitely you can include yeah please free to include the the link um to all the cheat sheets i would love to do one about how to to write PCF controls, but yeah, I think there's a lot of learning there for me to do, <laughs> to do first. Um, I think that's another step of complexity. So, I mean, what I what I think that I've noticed is that there's definitely um, a leaning more recently to the kind of the requirements gathering sort of analysis that you hinted at earlier, mm -hmm. um, because I think you know that. That is always a challenge in every project. I think you know, there's, 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 if if you don't have a, a a good analysis on a project and a good solution architect to kind of correctly match requirements with with their various different features of the Power Platform, it it can quite often you're not you're getting off on the wrong foot. Um, so, out of all of your cheat sheets in terms of requirements gathering you know what, what's your what do you think that is the, the best one you know what, what's the thing that you would say hey go and check this out if you if you've got five minutes and you you've only got five minutes where would you point people at to go and look at which would make the the most difference to people's projects yeah 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 so in terms of requirements gathering and kind of helping helping project stakeholders envision what's possible in in the platform right um definitely the ones that are very visuals like the views the forms i think those two are, are the main ones charts can be useful at times too but the two gives you very quickly okay what are the out of the box standard type of ui and to be fair for some stakeholders the ui and how 
visuals of the app um it is very important right so they 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 want to see how how views are working they want to see a calendar they want to see how does the form renders to my user so if you have those two you can very quickly during your workshop if you don't know the app kind of guide your clients in discussions or, or almost live look you want this i envision this using that kind of UI component, or we could have a subgrid here so that you can see on the form your related records. Does that work? Instead of going away and prototyping on, on your own, you could use those cheat sheets on the spot or just before the workshop to refresh yourself. What are the out of the box possible UI components mm -hmm. that you can bring to the discussion when you discuss requirements with, with your uh, stakeholders, right? Because Look, sometimes some people would say you should not discuss solution when you discuss requirements. But to be fair, there is a lot of, there is a bit of a mix uh, when you have those discussions, right? Having someone that knows what is possible can save a lot of time and, and, mm, and prevent frustration. Because you just, if, if you, if you have your stakeholders describing whatever they want, and, you know, with all the options and, and all their wishes, and then you go away, kind of don't set the expectation almost yeah very very fast you you know then because if you know then you go away it's almost like saying okay it's possible you kind of set the wrong expectation right so very quickly during my workshop when i have discussion with my stakeholders if they want something very fancy i try politely to say look it's it's a platform it's not a custom built app uh, you know, mm. not starting from zero. That's the advantage of having a platform like, like we have. You can get started very easily and, and very quickly and you have something in a few days, you, but, but there are limitation in, you know, and, and I propose this, you know, you want to do this. I propose yeah. this instead. Okay. There's two, yeah. two extra clicks, but we stay within the platform. It's easier to maintain, you know, and so forth. So, <laughs> I, I love I love that I, you know that common vocabulary the visual common voc visual vocabulary kind of thing I think that idea I think is so powerful um, you know I talk about like posters it's almost like in your workshop having those types of things on the wall so that you can kind of refer to them because although it's yeah like you say in an ideal world you don't create a solution until you understand the challenge you're trying to solve people do very quickly form a vi people are visual, right? You know, people want exactly. to see things in their heads and, and, and if you can create that common visual vocabulary and say, well, this is what it looks like. Um, rather than like you say, trying to, trying to describe it to people in an abstract way, well, subgrids and forms, it, it just doesn't, you know, and then you have to go and mock it up and then, or show some completely right. different app. And, and that's very, very difficult to do. So having an abstract way of describing it, I think is, that's just a, yeah, a, a really fantastic way of facilitating. Uh, so you don't end up, you know, going off on two different tangents where someone wants a completely different type of user interface that you can't do. <laughs> and yeah, then you're that, like, oh. That's, that's the important part there. Danny, you said that was, you know, important to show what you can do. I yeah. think it's just as important to show what you can't do. Yeah. Um, and, and cause you're really, you're showing in, in that cheat sheet, particularly you're showing the, the blocks. Here's the blocks. Arrange them however you want to arrange them. <laughs> play with them however you want to play with them. But we don't have a a trapezoid block for you to play with. You know, we've got just these blocks and and you know, solution what you got with those blocks, but but we know this is the the framework that you have to work with. And um in the last project on I said somebody that was used to custom UI, UX kind of stuff. And you know, when she came, oh I just you want you guys to do this, 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 this. I'm like, I, I can't do that. It's not support. <laughs> like it was I felt like I was just crushing her spirit every single <laughs> meeting. Yeah, I can't do that. Nope, not gonna happen. Nope, can't do that. <laughs> She's like, All I want you to do is apply a font. I was like, can't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't change the font in yeah. this case. And uh yeah, so I I uh I think that's gonna be great just to show somebody that's um maybe very, very knowledgeable on something else but hasn't worked on the platform before and just go, hey, here, here. Here's terminology. Here's in, in visual terminology. Here's here's the the blocks that you can play with, and um, go from there because that's that's huge. Because um, it took me like four months, but finally I was like, okay, you know, forms built of tabs. Tabs have sections, and sections have you can have subgrids. You can have you know uh, uh, um, 
uh, read only forms and, and, and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, getting her to just understand the concepts and refer to things was, uh, she got it and it was like, great, cool. But it took way longer than it would have, I think, if I would have known about your cheat sheet. Now that I do, I'm this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, to be fair, doing those, you, I mean, it's a little bit selfish, right? But doing them, it's how I learned too, right? So it's mm -hmm. how I, I it's, I'm always surprised each time. I think I know the person. I've been 16 years already in it, right? So I was early enough to start in Serum 3 and evolve all the way. So I always thought I knew the platform pretty well uh, until I fact I actually write one of the cheat sheets. And for example, the view one really surprised me with some of the, you know, there are some, some specific views, uh, like you, you, you can specify some specific components for some of those views, um, specific controls that I, would, I didn't even know they were there. Some are, are in preview or some are kind of Microsoft experimental controls, but I didn't know they existed. Um, I remember also, I think when I was writing the, uh, the chart cheat sheets, there is a tool, I think from, um, the CRM chart guy where you can, he was, so writing the, Ulrich, yeah. the cheat sheet, yeah, from Ulrich, writing the cheat sheet, I realized, because I'm always kind of going through the documentation online, what people wrote and everything, right? So it's a learning for me. I realized that you can effectively tweak, and I think it was for the view, sorry, for the view cheat sheet. Um, you can effectively tweak the fetch XML, the mm. XRM toolbox, and re-import the fetch XML behind the view in Dynamics. Mm. I, I, did, I didn't know that because... Jonas has just added that to the, well, not just, but recently added that to the fetch XML builder, which is awesome, which I love, yeah. love um, how you can do that and, you know, change the layout as well as change the fetch XML in views, yeah, um, exactly. which is very cool. Yeah, because mm. I always thought, I always said to my clients since years that, for some views, it's impossible. So some, some filters in views is just impossible to achieve. That's how view works, right? And then suddenly mm. I realized, well, if I can tweak it in fetch XML re-import, yeah, okay, it's a bit diffi more difficult to maintain that the, the track because you always have to do that manipulation, but it's not impossible. It is actually mm. possible, right? So yeah, yeah, so sometimes it's, it's, yeah, so half of it, it's, it's, it's learning. It's a learning exercise for me too. Yeah, I think doing is is a great way of learning. I I find that you know, mm -hmm. it's um uh, one of the interesting things is like slight sidetrack about that editing the the view fetch XML. It's like you know that challenge you can't sort in the UI by a, a related column on a related table. Mm. Um, you can you can in, you do that in the fetch XML. You can edit the fetch XML, XML to sort by a related column. So if you have like a you know, uh, a, I don't know a numeric value yeah. on a relate on a lookup. You could actually have a view to sort it out, but I'm, you know, obviously I'm always a bit wary of doing that. Is it, you know, from a performance reason, that's why they don't allow you to do it in the UI. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I'm never really sure if it's fully supported or if we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, mm, should we do I this? Think, <laughs> I think it, it, it should, yeah, it is considered more as, uh, for me, more as, customization slash coding. So it's that extra step, right? If the clients really want to go, if it's a deal breaker for the client to have that view and will prevent you from building, I don't know, a custom UI or a custom report or so just to fix that, then you're probably better off, like you said, editing that fetch XML and importing it, having as a, as a view, right? But, but if you, if the client can live without it, better probably mm. better not to, to touch it yeah usually the client can live without things i find um, yeah you know yeah. You, <laughs> usually if you tell them things like oh if you do this microsoft won't touch you with a barge pole oh i talked about barge poles is that something that, that do you know what a barge pole is daryl it's kind of like a punt, a punt pole? Uh, it's kind of like a punt pole actually yeah yeah i figured maybe um, bigger <laughs> or something <laughs> yes um Oh, you were talking about trap, trapezo trapezoids, or what were you talking about earlier? Trapezoids. Like yeah, trapezoids. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you get that from your calculator? Uh, is that, 
So, <laughs> trapezoid. I don't. So, yeah. What, so what is a tra- Yeah, I know it is. But what, what, how many sh- how many sides does a trapezoid have? It's like that caught me. Caught me. <laughs> I'm sure I should know. But anyway, anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I usually do find that if you tell people that something is probably not supported, and Microsoft may not actually um, support you. If you do it, then yeah, people's opinions quite quickly change. Um, in, in British and other forms of English, it's also called a trapezium. Ah, trapezium, right. So okay. it's, it's just a quadrilateral with one pair of sides parallel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you for that. Yes. It was, and so it's like a lazy the, rectangle where two of the sides yeah. aren't parallel. That, that's Yeah, uh, right. Yes. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. It all comes back to me now. Now we're doing basic geometry. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so so you, tell us about your course then. Because um, I, I noticed on your website you have a course. What's, what, what's that about then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a course really about, um, so it's, it's mostly for functional consultants to kind of step away a little bit from only thinking f- from a technical perspective, right? Dynamic. So our projects are not only, uh, it's not only listening to what the clients want and then go and, and, and build, right? It's about step back a bit. Your clients, doesn't always know what is the best for them because they don't know the platform that well. They have various level of experience. There's different product owners on each project that you had with kind of different backgrounds and everything. So don't assume whatever you get told that that's hundred percent correct and go and build it, right? Step back a bit, really try to understand what the company really needs to, needs to achieve, what the various people in the company what kind of problems they have, challenge that a bit. Now, don't go and build to the exact spec that the client wants. Again, propose alternative solution to to use config and stay out of the box as much as possible. Um, so it's about those techniques on how do you really get the kind of real requirements? How do you challenge that? How do you... Um, you know, build relationship with the clients in because our project are, I mean, it's a technology product, but it's, it's human working together, right? So I teach, I teach functional more the non techy parts of it, the methodology. How do you get to know your, your stakeholder, the, the tricks to get to know your stakeholder pretty well? Um, so just an example on my project, when I start a new project, I very quickly try to, you know, connect with the stakeholders. It's simple things, but you just have to remember, right? You start on a project, who are your key users? Who is your product owner? Schedule one-on-one with them. Try to understand their pain very quickly. It will help you build a relationship with them, a bit of trust very early on, as quickly as possible, which often I notice and pays off, I guess, um, when you are in a tricky situation where, and you know, not all project goes smoothly from beginning to start. There is always kind of a bumpy, <laughs> bumpy piece where you will need to lean on those uh, relationships that you build at the beginning. And people are always a little bit more accommodating, I think, when they like you and they know you have a relationship with them. So they are willing to help you solve problems instead of, you know, you told me you could do that now, you cannot, okay. Ex- escalation. If you don't have that, you can prevent all those. So I'm teaching consultants all those little techniques in this course, uh, which I found, um, based on like, experience, it's mostly based on, f- on, on experience where I myself got burned or, or I, I, I learned the hard way, right? What mm-hmm. hard to, if you don't change requirement, you then, you end up with something that at the end of the day, you know, does it probably meet your client? I, I, again, I learned the hard way. I was listening at the beginning to what the client wants, did it over, build something over complex to realize that half of it probably the client didn't use or didn't need, you know. So, yeah, so it's based on experience. Um, yeah, a few, a few people. Sign. So I launched it in, in December last year. So if, every month I have a few subscribers. So that's good. And yeah, I'm planning to kind of, continue and extending that a bit more um, over the next few few months, years, based on my experience. And 
yeah, again, I learned a lot by doing the course myself. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, inv invaluable, those kind of things. So it's le learning the hard way, you know, if someone else yeah. can, you know, someone else can take the advice and not learn the hard way. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a good, good way of uh, yeah. moving forwards. Thank you. I, oh, look, it's compliment. It will not solve, it will not teach you everything, right? It will, it's just that extra little piece of advice. And experience is, is better than, than, than anything. So you have to be on project. You have to face those situations. But yeah, those, those courses that the community is writing or some of us are sharing, it's based on real experience. So if you can take a small percentage out of it, it might just help you on your projects, right? Too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, we have Thanks. also a, a, a good, uh, a good, uh, uh, not comment, but you know, a positive review. I think from uh, from Neil Benson on your page, your previous uh, uh, guest host here or guest here. I've been a dynamics and analyst in Arctic since 2006, and I learned heaps on Danny's functional consulting course. I loved how he structured the course to help us clearly capture and organize requirements, the Azure DevOps techniques, and all the templates and resources. So, if Neil Benson learned something. We can all yeah, learn something. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> that's 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 quite a an accolade, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's funny. So, so we live in the same city with with me, right? So, I mean, I live yeah, uh -huh. yeah an hour an hour south. So, yeah, we catch up from time to time too. So, and he also, I mean, he's also about methodology a lot. So we kind of share a bit same ideas, um, agile and kind of practices in agile. So there is a bit of common, mm. yeah, mm. interest there. I always feel like I'm out in the middle of an island here in Indiana. Like, I, I <laughs> think I had an MVP that was in Chicago at one point in time, but I don't, I don't know if they, I don't, I don't even think they're MVP anymore. So like, I got to go down to like Atlanta, I think, or somewhere. I, I just don't know where the next closest MVP is. I mean, you're in Australia <laughs> and you get all the Australian MVPs are all next to Scott. I'm, I'm assuming there's quite a few people live in Seattle or near Seattle. Um, I don't know if that yeah. had. I yeah, there's, there's, I think there's. Yeah, I feel like there should be some kind of Power BI dashboard, you know, with everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we should do that. Yeah. Who's the most socially isolated business or, or geographically isolated business apps? Uh, <laughs> it's probably yes. not me, but you know, I just feel like you know, I should, I should you know, I should be closer to people. I'm not physically. <laughs> well, I I know nothing about Indiana other than it's huge. And, well, uh, huge is yeah. relative. Well, I, just, I I went to uh, Glacier National Park in Montana, which is uh, it borders part of it goes into t to Canada. Mm -hmm. I spent eighty hours in the van to get there and back and to see it. Eighty hours and four thousand six hundred miles. It oh, was wow. it would be closer for me to drive to Hawaii and back than to go and do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and there, I mean, there there are whole there there are wheat fields probably the size of 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 some small states out there in, in Montana. <laughs> and like, it's just like I this is crazy. So um, yes, so you, you say Indiana's big. I, it's uh, not compared to other places, but yeah, yeah, particularly speaking, yeah. So, um, so what's next then, you know, what's yeah. next, Danny, what's your, what's your kind of, where are you planning? Is there another cheat sheet on the horizon? No, you know. Yeah. So I have a, a backlog of, of ideas and, and subject I want to explore. Um, yeah, I, I'm going a little bit to try to experiment with some ideas about uh, my concept is. Can I write some articles about what if, so, sorry, the concept would be imagine if and three dot points. So and the idea is imagine if, and I will write a few articles on that. Imagine if I could create an entity diagram and with a click of, of a button, I have my tables build my forms build, my views build, my app basically build. And I just go to the designer and I just fine tune, you know, the details. Like, like a table in, in Dataverse has a lot of, of settings, but maybe by default, we can default how you create a table, right? So I want to write a few articles on that because I, I'm really passionate about the idea where 
we could spend a bit more time working with the business, trying to understand what they want, prototyping, having various diagrams, and then kind of the code generation and the building of it could be maybe automated a bit more. Because I see today that we spend a lot of time gathering requirements, discussing requirements, and then when some of those projects are a bit more complex and big, and then we spend a lot of time trying to translate those into something that the dev will understand. We try to involve the dev in some conversation, but when the project is big, you can involve the whole dev team on pro on workshop. It's just, it, it's not possible, right? Um, mm -hmm. So can we somehow in a few years time see a model where you spend a lot of time, as I said, prototyping and, and creating diagrams and ideas, and that gets somehow with the help of AI, maybe gets translated into the, the bare bones of an app. And then you can fine tune and, and, and add all the pretty components on top of it, but you, you don't spend such, so much time building the foundation. So that's one idea. Next one is about, so you know how you know you can, um, from Figma, you can create canvas apps, right? So mm. maybe we can think, maybe we can build model driven apps, right? From for, so product, cause I use also kind of, um, PowerPoint and, and Miro to do prototypes for model driven apps. Cause it's way easier to just drag, drag and drop fields, drag and drop subgrid and so forth and represent something to, to the idea. I know what's possible or not instead of building that in the designer, right? So maybe again, an idea would be, can I have a prototype, a wireframe, and that gets automatically built into a model driven app or an app, right? So all this, I want to explore a bit that kind of, of subjects to learn my, again, to learn myself a bit more, but maybe also to, you know, see a bit what's happening and, and be involved in, in projects like that. If, if other, members of the community want to try to experiment using the, I don't know. So that's a bit where. <laughs> it sounds, sounds very, um, I think, you know, like it, it's amazing if you, if you can do all of that grunt work, you know, the kind of the, the stuff that is just takes ages, you know, configuring forms and adding columns exactly. and, you know, stuff that really, you don't feel like you're really providing much value. If you can provide, if you can create some way of doing that in a quicker, conciser way that you can work on, uh, with, with, the, with the customer or the, with the stakeholders, um, kind of reminds me of the sort of the round trip engineering of the, the of the, you know, nineties and early, uh, early two thousands where you used to have like a UML model and you'd create your UML yeah. model and then that would generate the, the application. And then you would, you, you would then update your uh, application and it would go and update the UML model and you update the UML model and it would go, yeah. you know, like that kind of back and forth. Because I think that's such, always a challenge with these things is that you always want to be able to tweak both sides. You know, after Correct. you've made a change to your app, you want to then, well, you go back into a workshop and you don't want to have to then start doing it the laborious way again. You want to be able to do it the quick way. Um, yeah. And so, but you don't want to overwrite one of the changes you've done. So that kind of round tripping is, is always the, is the challenge there. But yeah, it's, uh, it sounds like a, a, a really, a really awesome thing. So you're looking for collaborators. Is that, is that what I, is that what you're saying? So I want to explore a bit the idea of writing a few articles about the topic, seeing first doing some research. So writing articles forces me to do research. So I'm going to learn myself first. What's, what, what is in there? Maybe mm -hmm. Microsoft, I'm not even sure. I need to do some ground on research. Maybe Microsoft is already doing something in that direction. So for example, I, I haven't seen the Figma to Canvas app coming. I, 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 you know, I'm an MVP, but I, I haven't heard about it, right? It's got announced. So I, I learn about it like everyone else, right? So I guess I want to look a little bit now, a bit, see what's happening in that space mm -hmm. first to educate myself, write a few cheat sheets, uh, sorry, write a few <laughs> articles <laughs> about, Chichitsu, uh, why not? about <laughs> it. Yeah. Write a few articles about it. See a bit the interaction because I will always learn a lot from people in, like you guys probably the same. We learn a lot about people interacting with the work we do, like the comments we get. And then we know who, who has 
similar interest and with who you can collaborate. So it's kind of, I want to see a bit who, who is kind of commenting and who has good ideas and I don't know, see, see what, where that leads. Um, but like, like you, I think Scott, even for theirs, I think that, that laborious work of creating that groundwork, creating the tables, the form, the views, and uh, it's, is I think it's just boring to be fair. Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's if, boring after the second uh, the second time like yeah. the first time you're like oh this is really yeah. cool i love it yeah. and then like oh wait wait i have to do this every single time i exactly. don't know i don't want to do yeah. that <laughs> exactly so if that could be a bit automated somehow if you can find a way to automate that um and then the devs really come to do the pretty stuff like the pcf ones and kind of you know really enrich the app with all the nice features and that groundwork mm -hmm. is being done by mm -hmm by you know the software itself um that would be amazing i think um yeah mm. so that's that's a bit my ideas um yeah cool. we'll see that sounds good sounds good to me can't wait well cool. the ideas are great it's getting the work yeah. is the hard part right <laughs> yeah yeah it's levels of the yeah, details yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah exactly. they, used, they used to be there, there was that uh, i think there is there's still there's, an, there's a few xrm toolbox tools which uh, allow you to import from excel and generate the, the attributes yep. and the tables yep. as you go Those um, are huge time savers see yeah, I, have, I, 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 have, I, I have to I, learn about that so that thank you I oh yeah you, you don't you, you said it all there there's the i, I think, think tanky so. has one i think that comes out of the box yeah. and then there's there another is, one yeah. as well but like oh, yeah okay. they have like excel templates you download and then like based on what you've selected like it gives you the different options and then you can just it'll suck it all up and import it directly right. and you can create mm. 100 field yeah. 100, 100 sorry 100 columns uh, yeah. in the matter of you know, oh wow about 10 minutes probably it doesn't, seconds. doesn't do the views uh the views. Or, or the form so that would be a, a really nice addition to it you know just to say have be able to have a really easy way because like it's one of those things like you know you once you you set one view then you go into the xrm toolbox and use the view layout replicator you know yeah. to kind of stamp yeah. the same same layout on all your you know the the, the associated yeah. and the grid and all that kind of stuff so um yeah it would be nice to have one way of doing that so that you can eat uh, again you know in the in sort of back in the day we used to call it a domain specific language you know so you you create like a language that defines a view and a form and, and tables and columns in a, in a way which mm. it's got like syntax uh so that you can then easily run that and, and and import it without having to go and do all of that grunt work yourself or or you can get an intern and just give them the job. <laughs> I think that sounds way easier than what you described. But you know, you know the challenge too, right? The challenge too sometimes is we humans make mistakes. What? So you, 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 you tell them to Shock. do something and then, and then sometimes it's, 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 it's wrong, right? And then you have to delete entities, delete tables. And ah, uh, it's just, I think it's that, that interaction. I mean, most of the time it, it's right. But we make mistakes yeah. right i think if you can avoid that translation piece and just having the software do that for us you know well, that, um, have, you, have you used the have you used the attribute manager to 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 kind of fix your mistake at all or not like because because that's one of the tools next to our toolbox that i have that can like change like let's say you create the type wrong and you want to just change it like it will do that for you and fix all the views and stuff yeah i, 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 I haven't touched in a while so maybe Maybe it's yeah. broken. I got to go back and check, but, but at least, it, it, you know, that, 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 that's the, you know, uh, that helps a little bit when you make your human mistakes from time to time. Yeah. 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 Talking about human mistakes, the one that got us all the time and I see happening still is setting the table to be organization owned instead of user <laughs> or team zone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that old chestnut. Or a or just that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. effectively, yeah. Um, that would be, uh, yeah, that would be a good one if you mine, could have a tool to revert that somehow. But I don't. Mine think is that's using possible. the connection table for things because every time I think it's a good idea to use the connection table, I run into some reason yeah. that it was a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Uh. Yeah. It sounds like uh, yeah, we should we should start to collate a, a list. Of, so that's a that's another cheat sheet. Things that things that I do, things mistakes that I make oh, yeah. that I wish I didn't make. <laughs> yeah, ne never use organizational. Never, ever, ever. 
<laughs> go, you, go, you have a you have a yeah. cheat sheet that you go on. You just, on every time you create a table, you just go. Well, uh, yep, okay, I've done all that. Every time you create a column, <laughs> you just <laughs> creating. Uh, yeah, uh, forgetting to set the correct date type on date, so it's like date only, like that. For I mean, that's that's ninety time, ninety five percent of the time. That's what people want. They don't want time zones on mm -hmm. anything else. And no, I wish that was a way to set that as the default. So, but oh well. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, all the fun skis, all the all the stars yep. that we bear, we, we call out to those around us. <laughs> Don't the twitches do it. that we have. <laughs> You'll regret it later, I swear. I can't tell you why. Just know. Uh, it reminds me of that. Um, reminds me of that little video that I've seen. You know, like user interface designer watching user interface testing. You know, where they use their mm. shape sorting shapes. And, and yes, it's the dev <laughs> tester where it's like, yeah. where does the square go in the square? And they're like, oh, where does the circle go in the circle? No square hole. What? It's, it's when they, like, they they kind of hover over the square and they put it square and they go, oh yeah, no, oh no. <laughs> No, no, like, and, where does the pyramid go that's right in the square in hole, the square the hole. <laughs> that, that's, like, that's, that's brilliant that is the best it, video ever i have to say yeah yes <laughs> it just brings a smile to my heart every day well donnie uh is there anything we've missed is there anything that uh that we need to make sure that our listeners either know about you or know about your cheat sheets or or something else that you need to that you'd like to um shamelessly promote no i think you guys covered quite a, a bit of ground thank you for that yes. it was lovely chatting to you and uh, yeah such an honor to be uh, you know part of the devs <laughs> <laughs> no it's not an honor i can tell you that <laughs> <laughs> no yeah <laughs> You're, you're really it's, a problem when we start sending you tasks. Are you going to do this? Go do this for me. It, it's an <laughs> honor for us to have you on the show, but it's not yes. an honor being a dev. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Donnie, uh, how can people get a hold of you? We, we mentioned your website and LinkedIn. Are those the are those the number one places that you'd uh, have people could reach out and yeah. uh, suggest new new cheat sheets or maybe additions to cheat sheets? Uh, oh, hey, yeah, absolutely. You should add this snippet. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Additions, feedback. There is the, yeah, I'll have different versions because of course the platform evolves. So I maintain, like I had the port to make, um, the current database connector, which has been duplicated. So now I have, so yeah, so they, they will, they will evolve. Of course, if someone has recommendation ideas, let me know. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, LinkedIn, definitely. I don't use Twitter at all. Mm -hmm. So Daryl. Yep, so <laughs> So don't, don't try Twitter. Good. I am, no. I am now following you officially on Twitter, but, uh, so I expect at least twice as many tweets as you normally done. So that's one a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all. No, I made, I made a choice to stay on LinkedIn only. No, that's, that's probably a good choice. It's probably a good choice. I, that's LinkedIn's where I, where I put my, my serious stuff and Twitter's where I put more of my goofball stuff. So anyway. Mm. Whatever we'll we have reasons for doing it different ways, I guess. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Well, Scott, that's how our listeners can get hold of our guests. How can our listeners get hold of us? Well, Daryl, yes, you can certainly get hold of us. Um, email cast at xmtoolbox.com, uh, or you can get to us on uh, Twitter and LinkedIn at xmtoolcast. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, which you can look at our, our silly expressions. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, we would really, really love to hear uh, from you, suggestions for future X episodes or just comments about the stupid stuff we say. <laughs> and thank you very much, Danny, uh, for, for coming you. on. It really, really has been a pleasure. And uh, and yeah, just I, I just can't wait till the next uh, cheat sheet and to, to see the, see what uh, future you cheat have sheet. in store for us. Cheat sheet, cheat sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, T -t take a punt to that cool. one. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it was lovely to be here. <laughs> it was a great meeting. It makes for, for <laughs> cheat sheets. Have a good one. Bye. Bye bye. This has been the XRM Toolcast with Daryl Labar and Scott Durrell. Produced by Lynn Zawin. If you have any questions or suggestions, please send them to cast at xrmtoolbox.com, tweet at xrmtoolcast, or hit us up on our LinkedIn XRM Toolcast page.